Hello, this is a video showing how I fixed my Clever Spa four-person inflatable hot tub when it had the error code SH. As you can see here, the control panel has the SH error code showing. Now on the website for Clever Spa, that said that that's a water temperature sensor issue. So I went to eBay to have a look how much a temperature sensor cost. This is the one I bought, it only cost a few quid. Now you don't need the circuit board or anything, just the actual probe and the wires. The specification must be 12 volts as the hot tub has a transformer that converts the 240 volts down to 12 volts and it has to be within the temperature range of your hot tub. So this one being minus 10, to 60 degrees fits the bill perfectly now i'm sure you're wondering if you don't have a clever spa hot tub will this work on a lazy spa um, i think it probably will i've not taken apart a lazy spa but i'd imagine that the technology is quite similar um, but the advantage you'll have is that you won't have to take yours apart to be able to get to the electronics just unscrew the egg thing that comes with it so you could always unscrew the egg have a look inside and see if what's inside is similar to what's inside the clever spa i'd imagine it is but I can't guarantee without seeing one. The first thing you're going to want to do is remove the control panel. You do this by folding up the flexible plastic and unscrewing the two nuts on either side. The back of the control panel is held on by some screws. You undo this so you can then take the cable out. You then need to unscrew the two fittings on the inside and the one on the outside. Some of these are quite tight so you might need to use a tool. Just be careful not to damage the threads. The unit will then slide out. It is a bit tight, so give it a good pull. I've plugged it back in just to show the SH error code is still on the screen. So where is the temperature sensor on the unit itself? Well, the pipe that goes into the bit with the heating element in is where the sensor is, and it's actually located in the pipe. It's actually uh, been glued into the pipe itself. Now, as you look at mine inside here, you can see it's discolored. That's because the sensor although it's made of plastic, has some sort of uh, metallic covering on it, and that's uh, worn away, so it doesn't pick up the heat anymore, I suppose. So that needs to be replaced. Now, we're not going to take this one out, because taking it out of the uh, pipe itself might damage the pipe, so I'm just going to snap this one off, and then drill a new hole to put the new one in. Now before we start cutting wires and things, make sure it's unplugged. In fact, while you're tinkering with any of this, make sure it's unplugged because you don't want to electrocute and die, do you? So the wire for the sensor itself is very thin. It's made up of two small wires. They look like speaker wires and they obviously attach to the sensor and then they disappear off up into the unit. Now you're going to want to make sure you cut this, leaving yourself enough wire um, to be able to splice on the new one. So you just cut this with whatever you like and then trim off the insulation. So I have snipped my wire and I've plugged it back in. Don't touch any of the wires while it's plugged in, but I've plugged it back in just to see what comes up on the display. And as you can see, we've got a new error code. We now have an SL error code. And the Clever Spa website says that this is a temperature issue, which makes sense because it has no temperature sensor anymore as we've just cut the wire. So I've wired up the new sensor. That's just the case of splicing the two wires together. You're going to need to cover these with some insulation tape so they don't touch each other and short each other out. Time to test it. And there we go. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. We now have a temperature coming up on our display, which is the ambient temperature of the room I'm in. So, happy days. All that's left to do now is to install the new sensor into the pipe. And you're going to do this by using a drill the same diameter as the sensor. In this case, it's 4 mil. So drill a hole next to the original one. Once it slides in there nice and easily, make sure it's not too tight because you don't want to scratch the surface. We're then going to use some really rough sandpaper just to rough up that pipe to make the glue hold better. The glue I'm using is a two-part epoxy, Gorilla Glue. It's really strong stuff. You just mix this in equal parts and then use that to put around the uh, join there. Just make sure you don't put it on there, then put the sensor in because you might get glue on the probe itself. So make sure you put the probe in and then put some of that glue around it. Uh, it's quite thick stuff, so it shouldn't seep into the hole. Just make sure it's a nice tight fit first and then put the, uh, the epoxy on. I did this in about three goes, making sure it's completely set before I put the next one on. So once that glue's completely set, you can put it all back together following these instructions in reverse and then you can test it. So as you can see, the bubbles all work. And we're going to Test the filter, that's still good. Set the temperature to a nice toasty 38. 
Press the temperature again and turn the heater on. And that's it. Happy days. Three hours later. So this has been on for a while now. Let's just have a look to make sure that the temperature is actually going up. And as you can see, it's gone up to 20. The next day. And there you go. We're finished. And for less than a tenner's worth of stuff. Is that good? <laughs>